Greetings, 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 family. Greetings, peace and power. Dr. Dennis Asar Winkler back at you again uh, for a special, special, special community university today, family. I'm so excited about our guest today. Um, we have a legend in the building. We have a legend in the building. I'm so excited to able to have and present this guest before the public today. Um, if you can see uh, my shirt here, uh, I'm representing uh, the, I'm going to say the revolutionary Sojourner Douglas College. Um, and I have the founder, the president of Sojourner Douglas College and so many more great things that we'll talk about later here today um i was a student of sojourn douglas college i graduated from sojourn douglas college and i'm going to say that sojourn douglas college changed my life and i'm going to say um give a shout out to uh dr charles simmons before we even get started today i'm going to go through his bio but i want to say that sojourn douglas college under the leadership of uh dr charles simmons was in revolutionary and i mean revolutionary institution in transforming the lives of people in baltimore and beyond i'm saying that lots of us talk about things we talk about building we talk about building things for our community and we speak about it in just theory i am saying we have a person with us today who understands theory really well but also understands the application of theory. Being a student of Sojourn Douglas College, it, it often bothered me many times because people would say things like, uh, we don't have institutions. We don't have anything. We don't have our own. But at the same time, not highlighting that we have and had and had so many people's lives changed from our institution. And if you ask me, why did I go? People say, why do you go to Sojourn Douglas College? Because it's ours. You understand, built in the civil rights and the black, uh, the, the black power during the civil rights and the black power movement and all these type of things, a very powerful institutions where we use textbooks like, let's say, pedagogy of the press, where we use uh, souls of black folks, where we use um, miseducation of the Negro, where we use the ISIS papers, where we had classes on uh, uh, the, the psychology of racism, where we had classes on psychology of the black family. I am saying that, honestly, I went to higher education even, I'm saying matriculated to get my master's degree and PhD due to my experience at Sojourner Douglas College. And I'm telling you, I was a force to deal with with the level of education that we received at Sojourner Douglas College. I am telling you that Sojourner Douglas College is one of the best kept secrets in in the world. And, I, and I'm saying when it comes to our liber for the liberation of our people, I'm saying all the things that we talk about was actually done. And I'm saying not every, I'm talking about when we talk about education and educating our own. So Journal Douglas College was so revolutionary in so many different ways. Uh, I, I'm, you know, I, I just, I'm just going to say a little bit, like offering a, a, a platform where our people who were oppressed could move beyond the barriers I'm talking about in any in all barriers to help educate us. I'm saying anything, everything from child care pro, uh, being provided, everything from if you're struggling with math, we're gonna help. We're gonna help catch you up. We're gonna catch you up because we understand how important ma math is. But we're gonna catch you up and teach you with an andragogical approach, right? We we understand pedagogy, but we're gonna teach you with an andragogical approach so that. We uh, can help aid you in uh, uh, being an asset to your community. But without any further ado, what I'll do is I'm going to read on Dr. Charles Simmons. I'm going to bring him on. I'm going to read his bio. Um, here it says, uh, Dr. Charles Simmons is founder and president of Global Education Services Incorporated, co-founder and president of Sojourner Douglas College, Baltimore, Maryland. A native Baltimorean, he is a graduate of Union Graduate School where he earned his Ph.D. in administration of higher education in 1978. Postdoctoral studies include educational management at Harvard University Graduate School of Education, Institute for Educational Management. 
He also attended Morgan State College and Antioch College, where he majored in history and political science and urban development and sociology, respectively. His professional studies include legal, ethical, procedural aspects of collective bargaining, covering disciplines of legal complexities of labor management relations, labor history, economic research for contract negotiations and interpretation and grievance procedures and arbitration. Dr. Simmons' international experience includes team leader of historical black college presidents under the auspices of the United States Agency for International Development, travel abroad. With support from the USAIDS linkages program and the Fulbright Hayes program, in conjunction with the National Association of Equal Opportunity in Higher Education, several activities have been undertaken to strengthen the international dimensions of Sojourner Douglas College's curriculum and development, develop cooperative agreements with Africa, Caribbean, and South American nations and universities. Activities carried out under the NAFEO and USAID cooperative agreements, including negotiating contracts and linkage agreements with universities in Kenya, Senegal, t t t I'm, is that, that's not t Tunisia, Morocco, Uganda, Barbados, Dubon, South Africa, Egypt, it says twice, as chairman of the NAFEO, USAID, Egypt Committee, and Liaison for NAFEO institutions and Egyptian government and universities. Additionally, President Simmons has discussed university linkages with the South African ambassador to the United States as well as the Botswana ambassador to the United States. Dr. Simmons has explored collaborations with institutions of higher education in Asia, South America, the Caribbean, and Africa. Dr. Simmons established a Sojourner Douglas College branch campus in the Bahamas and has collaborated with people of the Bahamas since 1977. In 2010, Dr. Simmons entered into a collaborative agreement to help found the, the Suriname Institute of Technology in Suriname, South America. Dr. Charles W. Simmons visited Singapore, Indonesia, Hong Kong, Vietnam, and China and negotiated tw with 12 colleges and universities to develop strategic alliances and partnerships by articulating bachelor's and master's degree programs and train Asian faculty and exchange international students. In 2014, Dr. Simmons visited Sao Paulo, Brazil to negotiate linkages with Brazilian universities. Sojourner Douglas College has long been interested in developing relationships and collaborations in the Caribbean. President Simmons visited Jamaica on three occasions, exploring collaborations and possibilities of establishing a campus in Jamaica. The college also had a two year training six in St. Croix, U.S. Virgin Islands, with a view towards establishing a campus there. Before assuming his position as president of Sojourner Douglas College, he was co-founder and co-director of the Homestead Montebello Center of Antioch University from 1972 and 1980. Director of Health Education and Community Organization at the Baltimore City Health Department from 1967 to 1974 and field representative for the International Brotherhood of Teamsters from 1964 to 1967. Uh, and... He is the former secretary of, of the board of directors of National Association for Equal Opportunity in Higher Education and Consortium of Historically and Predominantly Black Colleges and Universities. His cultural and community involvement includes co-founder, director of grants, aid and development, and member of boards of directors of the Left Bank Jazz Society from 1964 to 1987. He has held membership in the Congressional Black Caucus Educational Business Brain Trust, the Council for the Advancement of, for Experimental Learning, Learning, and let me say that again, y'all. The Advancement for Experimental Learning, the Association for Community-Based Education, and he is a member of the Greater Baltimore Committee Leadership Class of 2000 and the Maryland Leadership Class of 2001. During his four-year tenure with the United States Marine Corps from 1955 until 1959, he received a preparatory and advanced training at the Naval Aeronautical School and served with the Atomic Energy Commission during Operation Desert Storm Rock, atomic bomb testing conducted in Nevada Desert and Operation Heart 
ATAC, a variety of land, water, surface, underwater, atomic, and hydrogen bomb de de detonations in, 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 I don't know how to say, in Nawatak and. How do we talk? Oh, it's, okay, like that. And Bikini, <laughs> you might have to help me with this one too. Bikini Atolls and Marshall Islands between 1956 and 1958. Dr. Simmons also played football in high school in the United States Marine Corps, including with Marine Corps All Star team. So, what I hear, family, is that Dr. Simmons is a well rounded and I'm certain that it's so much not even on here, but I'm, I am certain by listening and hearing this bio reading, this brief bio for Dr. Simmons, right? Uh, that you can uh, conclude that he's a well rounded brother, a well rounded elder that he wasn't really uh, allowing, looking at the paint dry. So with no further ado, I present to you, Dr. Charles W. w. Simmons. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Dr. Winkler. Um, and thank you for those kind and generous uh, words. Um, it is my pleasure uh, to be able to participate with you and um, alumni of Sojourner Douglas College. It's been a while. Um, it's been, you know, some good times and some tumultual time. Um, but we're still here. Uh, and there's still uh, a possibility for, um, you know, uh, transitional education, um, which is certainly um, needed in our community, still needed in our community. I think we have to remember that the United States was built on inequality and um, and I can tell you that uh, today, especially, um, you know, this um, uh, effort is trying to rise again. So we're in the need of um, black scholars um, interested in making a difference and changing the world. So thank you, thank you, thank you for the introduction and thank you for what you do. And thanks for accepting the invite. My pleasure. I I want to um, um, uh, talk, and I have a PowerPoint presentation um, that I'd like to um, present. Um, I just finished writing my biography. It's at the printer, and I got so excited with that. And, and talking to people at Sojourner Douglas. So now I'm in the process of writing a history of Sojourner Douglas College. And I'm doing that because there's a need for black scholars with a different orientation who would become catalysts um, for black liberation, black self-development and resolution of the many ills affecting the black community, America and the world. Um, I believe that we must set and meet our own goals and um, for self-reliance, self-development, and social justice. And so the, the reality is that we're engaged in a crusade of our children's future. Poverty, the cradle to prison pipeline, the absence of early education and enrichment are shaping our future. A movement of well-educated, culturally and socially prepared youth and adults, which is what inspired the founding of Sojourner Douglas College, was then and still now uh, is needed to confront this crisis. So I'd, I'd like to just briefly go through this PowerPoint presentation, talk about um, Sojourner Douglas College, um, uh, the significance of the college, uh, community struggle for self-determination. I just wanna reflect on that for a minute. Um, uh, and um, uh, Dr. Nasak, if, if we can, um, I don't know how, what to do. Okay, 
and to to um, 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 to, to signal when when to uh, change the slide, but but there's still uh, when Sojourner Douglas College was founded, a need was identified. Local leaders um, uh, identified educational gaps during the civil rights era. Um, we in, in Baltimore resident activists formed uh, what was called the Freedom School, uh, which we located down on Fremont Avenue. Um, in 1972, Coretta Scott King, who was a graduate of Antioch, and Ellen, um, Congresswoman or Senator Eleanor Holmes Norton, Norton, who was a graduate and member of the board of Antioch, contacted Walter P. Carter. Walter P. Carter was considered the Martin Luther King of Maryland. He was he and Samson Green were the two of the local civil rights activists. In 1972, Coretta Scott King contacted Walter P. Carter and said that they had convinced the president of Antioch to allow local um, activists in minority communities around the country to establish branch campuses of Antioch. Well, uh, Walter P. Carter contacted me. I used to be a, I was formerly a Teamsters Union representative. And when Walter Carter and Sampson Green was setting up picket lines um, to uh, express uh, civil rights issues, I would help organize uh, members of the community to join the picket lines. And so, and when I was uh, needed a picket around a, country, a company that I was trying to organize, and I would articulate the matter uh, about African Americans working there being exploited. Uh, Walter P. Carter and Sampson Green would then bring civil rights activists to uh, put pickets around uh, the company that I was trying to organize. So Walter Carter and I were very close. When Coretta Scott King contacted Walter Carter about the possibility of establishing an Antioch branch, there were two opportunities. One was a wholly owned branch by Antioch, and one was what was called an affiliate branch, uh, owned by the, operated by the, owned and operated by the community with an agreement that it would eventually spin off and become independent. So we started in 1972 as a branch of Antioch College, and in 1980, we spun off and became Sojourner Douglas College, an independent community control uh, branch of Antioch College. Uh, during that time, and the reason that we um, needed to do that, during the 1970s, Maryland ranked near the bottom in the percentage of population completing high school, the percentage of completing four years of college, the percentage of black populations attending college, mm -hmm. the percent of, of Baltimore's black population attending college for one or more years. And even though it was lowest in those numbers, it was highest in mm -hmm. the uh, uh, cradle, what was called the cradle to prison pipeline. Uh, black young people uh, going, to, going to prison in such high numbers. Dr. Say. So, so, the, so the vision was carved out by the community. Sojourner uh, was a result of the vision shared by the leaders of the greater Baltimore community, including, you can see there, Congressman Perrin Mitchell and several other uh, uh, black leaders in the Baltimore community. Dr. Masai, um, uh, the vision then uh, was community empowerment to establish an institution of higher education staffed by local residents, many of whom the college would educate. And you can see that picture, that's uh, uh, one of our first classes. We started in a parish house in the Homestead Montebello community where the whites had moved out of the community and turned the church over to the community um, the church turned the parish house over to us. That's me sitting in the window 
um, and, uh, and uh, teaching a class uh, in that parish house. Uh, at the bottom is uh, Robin Patterson Quarles. Uh, she was our first director of admissions uh, in, in our recruitment activities. So, so Doc. Yes. Are, are you saying, help, help me with this. So you're saying that it was staffed by uh, future students that yeah. who would matriculate through the actual institution. Yes. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I think that's again, like how did, how was that even conceived? Like, 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 like we're going to st- the people on the staff are actually going to go through the program. How re- I'm just saying in my mind, I'm like, how revolutionary is that? How, uh, when I say revolutionary, how forward thinking and out of the box thinking is that like, how, what was that? What was that like? Was, I mean, what was some of the struggles with some of the um, joys? You know, what was that like? You know, it was, it was very interesting and I'm glad you asked. Um, uh, because we came together, you, you, Remember now, many of the of the students were formerly uh, or still involved in the civil rights movement. Mm. So, um, so it was a mixture of education, of civil rights, and 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 interestingly, that's why we we instituted um, the the uh, linkage between learning and action, mm. um, the experiential learning. Um, project demonstrating competency because we wanted to keep the link between education and uh, uh, and, and social change. Hmm. Our vision was social change and, and so every student, and we're going to talk about that, that's in the PowerPoint presentation, but every student engaged in um, in a project demonstrating competency, which was an experiential learning linking theory to practice. Oh, awesome, awesome. And, and so our students, I mean, I'm so proud of our students, our students, and just, I, I mean, look at you. Uh-huh. I mean, our students have done some wonderful things. And I think, I mean, many of them were already active and activists in the community, uh-huh. but the concept of linking theory to practice experiential learning was is the highest form of education and it was something that um was just colleges and universities were just beginning to embrace yeah um thinking about that um i remember when i i I took a lot of classes at sojourner and and, and i took uh those uh, classes if you had real um, world experience. I forgot what it was called. Like I had experience already in the world and I got the chance to really work with, uh, Dr. Marion Stanton. And she would often say that, um, you, 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 you bring so much already. You all bring so much already. And then, and how it's just like, no, let's refine that. Let's really like improve that. Let's expound upon that. And, um, so I listened to you saying, you know, take that, um, they brought something, but also there was a process going through a process to further build on top of that. Well, yeah, that's, I appreciate that. Right. So, so, um, we wanted to empower the community and it's not just a concept. Empowerment for us was, was real. Local educators took the initiative to, as I said, along with with students to set up this college um, to help uh, uh, residents who had many of, we had young students, but many of our students were older students. Um, And so we wanted to help them fulfill uh, their educational aspirations. So what we did was we, what we wanted to link self-determination and the civil rights movement to education uh, to not only um, help the students but also improve uh, factors in the community so we were an independent education institution that reflect the community's desire for self-determination this was a shared vision between us and the community we um, we um, uh, wanted to provide higher education for uh, mature students 
as well as the traditional age students um, to help them both advance in their jobs, but also uh, to improve um, aspects of the community. We did a number of things. What you see there was a transportation program where that students started uh, that would link with uh, to help um, people who didn't have access to transportation uh, get back and forth to work, back and forth to medical appointments. Um, uh, we called it at Sojourner Douglas College Advantage too. Um, we had uh, community residents doing a number of things. This at the top right here is Dr. Marion Stanton. She was one of the co-founders. Uh, so we wanted to pro provide a degree with a purpose, um, not just to uh, educate people, but a learning model for self-development, engagement, and effective social action in the community. We believe that there were no sharp distinctions between living, learning, working, and learning could be reconciled with both study and action uh, in a way that offered both student growth um, through social and academic utilities, improving aspects in the community. Again, um, you, we have to remember that we're in, um, in a, engaged in a crusade for our children's future. We still are our children's future. Poverty, the cradle to prison pipeline, the absence of early education and enrichment are shaping our future even today. So we understand and understood that a movement of well-educated, culturally and socially prepared youth and adults, which is what inspired um, the founding of Sojourner Douglas College was then and still needed to confront this crisis. So we offered a purpose, a degree with a purpose. Our mission was to assist communities, the community to develop skills to gain control over those forces which shape their lives, to provide a climate necessary for leadership and community development, uh, to foster greater emphasis on self-awareness, social justice, and self-determination, and provide the student with the opportunity to improve the quality of life for, 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 for themselves, for their family, and for other members of the community. Um, we served over 8,000 students. We operated as Sojourner Douglas from 1980 until uh, 2015. And we can talk about what happened there, but we served over 8,000 students. We graduated over 6,000 with over 70% going on to graduate schools. Um, and we so so we had both an economic and social impact on the students, excuse me, and the community. Wow, 70 percent. 70 percent of our students went on to graduate school. Wow, that is major. I, I never saw that stat before. Um, wow, 70 yeah. percent. Oh, that's major. And I think one of the things that um, there's some debate in the community, and I think one of the things that Sojourner uh, did great. Now, even speaking to the stat, you, the stats you just shared is that it. it, it oh, you you said it already. It 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 was more than theory. It it was all. It was also about applying that theory, right? So the uh, theory. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. See. Um. So we offered undergraduate, graduate programs. They were designed to meet the needs, the critical needs of the community to improve the quality of life of the students and the community. And we are, it was applied program, as we talked about, um, providing students the opportunity to apply the theory in real life situations. And they were called pro PDCs, project project demonstrating competency, and on the master's level, projects demonstrating uh, mastery. 
um, and served as a, uh, these were social change projects that designed to improve the quality of life for the students, for the family, and for the community. Mm. We, we also um, had an office of uh, uh, community outreach um, office, uh, which, which served the community here in the center um, is Jamal uh, Mutabe. He was director of our community outreach. That's a politician. I'm think, trying to think of her name. Oh, God. Um, my memory is not what it used to be. Um, and here at the uh, bottom left is Kareem Aziz um, uh, with community uh, leaders. Um, bottom right um, is a community meeting at, I think that church was in Annapolis, uh, but we, we had uh, campuses in Annapolis and we would meet with communities and churches, both in Baltimore and Annapolis. Um, uh, so, so our focus was was community. Yeah, yeah, I definitely um, um, formed a real good relationship with Baba Aziz, um, uh, and that still lasts to the, this day uh, as a result of Sojourn Douglas College. Um, he and Sojourn Douglas College okay, got okay, got us involved in a lot of the. Um, uh, what's the thing? The the brother from New York. Um, dang, I can't think of it. The state of the black world. Um, those conferences and things. Uh, yeah. Um, um, Ron mm-hmm. Daniels, Dr. Ron Daniels. Ron Daniels Dr. Yeah, Daniels. yeah. And so that connection right. there um, is, is, is right. beautiful. And it's still, I just was meeting with Dr. I mean, Baba Aziz, uh, maybe uh, about last year or around this time. Yeah. And, and that's what we try to do, connect with, with uh, people around the country, uh, leaders around the country who are trying to make a difference in our community, like Ron Daniels. Yes, sir. So um, we we um, we had a, a, a very rich history. Um, we were recognized in the community. We got support from the community, but but we succeeded because of our extraordinary um, uh, faculty, board members, supporters, and alumni. We, we, some of our, I've seen some of the work um, um, that our alumni is doing, like, like you, Dr. Winkler. Um, the university, the concept of a community is, is, is awesome. And that's one of the things that we uh, wanted to do. Um, mm-hmm. The whole idea of, of community is, is, even though we weren't named a community at the time, mm-hmm. what we were doing the relationship between Sojourner and the community was, uh, you know, what you're doing, you know, the, with the community. That's 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 major. Definitely a community university at Sojourner. I know so many people. Brother Jabari used to have his events there um, from Survivors Nations. Um, he was supposed to join us, um, but he. Uh, used to have all the different lecturers come in and if it wasn't for Sojourner Douglas College he wouldn't I mean I'm not saying he wouldn't have been able to pull it off but he talks about how it aided him and and, and supported him in that effort I also know that my father uh he he taught Tai Chi there um uh for many years um after his uh after the uh I forgot uh, Bob uh, his uh the person who taught him Tai Chi passed on he started teaching classes there and so many other things that went on um as a result of allowing the community come in as well and uh yeah and and just the community atmosphere of the institution and the way that students work together to make sure that everyone succeeded i mean it was phenomenal and i'm and i I often say that um i think that's a journey that statistic that you brought up was really interesting because i often tell people that 
sometimes when we went through Sojourner as undergrads, we didn't realize that we were getting like master's level type of education. The level of we had to write a lot. We had to think a lot. We had to uh, uh, we had to think our thoughts out. And uh, even looking at your um, your bio, I remember one of one of the game changing things in my life. It might be interesting. Uh, interesting is that I had to write a biographical sketch of my own. And I had not realized how much I had accomplished until I had to write this biographical sketch as a result of one of my classes at Sojourner. I'm just saying it, it, it was phenomenal. So it definitely was a community university uh, at the, to say the least. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we, um, uh, the slide, the, the, the photo on the top left was the parish house. That was the church. The great building was a church and the parish house is the one with the roof over it. Uh, that was a church where the, the white parishioners had moved out and turned it over to the community. It was in the um, Homestead Montebello community of, 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 of Baltimore. That's where the name came from, uh, the Homestead Montebello Center of Antioch College. So we were there from 1972 to 1973. And then we moved to the one in the center that was a storefront. Uh, it was the former office of one of the black politicians in that community um, on, on uh, Asquith Street, I think. And then we bought two houses a block away, which is on the right. Um, so we're there from 1973 to 1975. And then in 1975, the photos on the bottom, uh, we bought the one on the bottom left um, was on the footprint of the um, Central Avenue building, which is the long building um, in the center. And then the one on the far right at the bottom was Caroline Street. That was on the Dunbar um, campus. Um, so we bought those buildings in 1975 until uh, 2015. When, when we were forced to close. Um, but we wanted to be a pillar in the community. We wanted to make contributions in the community. So I'll say we were and still are a pillar in the community. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we also established campuses um, in Annapolis uh, this campus was built from the ground up for Sojourner Douglas College. And uh, the lady who's being interviewed on the top left, Dr. Charlestine Farrelly, she was the uh, campus director there. In the center um, is um, uh, Dr. Farrelly with, um, oh God, um, oh Lord. <laughs> a gentleman who gave us a 40 acre farm. What was, oh Lord, I can't, I'm, his name escapes me. Uh -huh. um, but, but that was the, uh, uh, but the Annapolis campus that was, was built for Sojourner Douglas College. Um, and the right in the middle is Donald Hutchins. He was uh, our vice president uh, uh -huh. for um, fiscal affairs. Uh -huh. oh, boy, I, I, but but that was a that was a wonderful campus. Um, I'm 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 blocking. I'll, his name will come to me. It happens to me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm honest. I'm honest. It, it happens to me all the time. And you 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 you, and you got and you got some time with me. But it's all it's all it, it's been happening to me since I was a baby. <laughs> <laughs> This is our Cambridge campus. Um, in the center is a campus director there. Um, that was an elementary school, a mm -hmm. former elementary school that we acquired um, in Cambridge. Mm -hmm. This is our Salisbury campus. Uh, this is the, the top uh, director and that's her in the, in the center as well. Uh -huh. in Salisbury, Maryland, on the Eastern Shore. Uh. 
Prince George's County. This was uh, Prince George's uh, County campus. Yeah. yeah. They, 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 had, they had a lot of energy. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> they, they try to come up to Baltimore representing on this doc. They used to try. <laughs> right. <laughs> They're like, we from PG. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> yeah. This is our Owens Mills campus. Um, and that's, um, I'll uh, see the director there, Doris Carroll, was the director of our Owens Mills campus. Mm-hmm. Uh, this was our Bahamas campus. Um, this was a, on the on the top left was mm-hmm. um, a graduating class to, in in two thousand two. Um, um, the, the the lady in the front on the far left is Doris Carroll. She went to um, to the Bahamas to help establish that campus. Mm-hmm. She was the first director of the campus. Mm-hmm. The person next to me is. Um, he was a former governor general of the campus. He was on our board of directors. Um, 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 there, this is uh, on the top uh, uh, right is uh, Mayor Kurt Schmoke. He went to um, uh, visit the campus and, and he's talking with our second uh, director of the uh, Bahamas campus. Hmm. And, then, and then the bottom right is a uh, is a photo of the building. Hmm. Yeah, but we had good relationships with the mayor, uh, with Mayor Smoke at the time. Uh-huh. Um, he was very interested in, in in what we were doing. He he actually um, visited. Went went to. Um, I was shocked. Uh, went to the Bahamas to spend some time there. Visited the campus. Uh-huh. Yeah, Doc. When I'm, I'm 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 hearing you say this right, and for me, um, being a student at Sojourner, lots of this we we've known, but just to know that many people don't know this in the world don't know this. I'm I'm listening. I'm looking at Brother Jai Logic in the um in the comments. He says, "Wow, this is inspiring." He says, "This is inspiring," and and, and I actually started a, a, um, a radio platform. Uh, back in uh, around 2013, 14, something like that. And I used to speak about, you know, uh, Sojourner Douglas College and so many other things that don't get that um, media attention often, um, more than saying what we don't have, right? So many people don't even realize that there has been a black, and there's others too, but that's specifically like a Sojourner Douglas College, a black independent for the community type of school. They really think that it never, ever existed. Any mm-hmm. thoughts about that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not Sojourner Douglas College, but I'm saying that nothing like this ever took place. Mm-hmm. I agree. I agree. And it was a, it was a result of... Um, you know, a lot of people, civil rights activists, uh-huh. community, you know, community leaders. Uh, uh, so you, you, I mean, our students were exceptional. Uh-huh. I mean, I, I'm just amazed. I'm still amazed at at, at our students. You know, and I, I have in, in part of a, one of the sections in the document that I'm writing, uh, students who overcame challenges uh, to go to school and graduate. Mm-hmm. And um, and I'm also have a section, and I'm, I'm I mm. encourage uh, students, um, alumni. I have another section of some of the things that our alumni are doing now, and so I encourage uh, alumni, um, Dr. Winkler and uh, others, you know, who uh, con- uh, send me uh, biographies, send me. Uh, things that you're doing, things that you've done in the community mm-hmm. so that I can incorporate it in the in the history of Sojourner Douglas College that I'm writing. Because I can tell you, I can tell you that our students and our alumni mm-hmm. you know, are doing some spectacular things. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and 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 I don't want to take <laughs> I don't want to take credit for that, but 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 I believe, and that's why I think uh, the education 
the kind of education we provided connecting um, theory with practice, ex experiential learning component um, um, uh, was, a, was at least one of the catalysts mm -hmm. that, um, uh, that, that caused students then and continue to make progress and change so in the community. Yeah, and another thing, I, I, I just got to put it in here, is this, I was in the classes where when we look at racial identity development, when we look at uh, Cross's theory and other theories of racial identity development, it talks about where we are and how we identify in our blackness, right? And if you, and a lot of times people came to Sojourner and they didn't real, they didn't necessarily, they, I would say they were like more, I forgot what the, I can't even think about it right now. They're more, let's say, in the um, assimilationist type of ideology. And, but not about politics and everything, but just like, why do we got to learn about all this black stuff many times over here, students? They were like, uh, why? So I went there, I was blacker than black. I'm not going to lie. I was already black, black. But when, so, 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 but I've heard so many that went through the process of becoming black and accepting being black or African people who, when they first came in the door, what's all this black stuff? So it wasn't like an e, it was a process that you had to go through even as being a result at the Sojourner Douglas College. If you were uh, not, uh, uh, your blackness was uh, enhanced uh, if you went to this school or it was going to be a challenge for you. <laughs> I agree, and I, I I hear I hear uh, more and more alumni make that kind of comment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hear them t to Dave even as well, saying they didn't know about themselves, their history, their culture, and it, you know until they went there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, mm -hmm. major. So um, uh, some of our assets, we also, we provided um, uh, child care uh, because we were serving adults and we knew that um, many adults needed um, uh, support for their children while they were in class. So we created a charter school and so the, our students could, uh, during the day, it was a regular uh, early childhood education program in the evening uh, or during the day in the evening if students had class they could bring their children with them and we would uh, educate the children uh, while the while the parents were in class uh, the, the top right photo there is one of our workforce development programs we had not only the uh, 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 bachelor's and master's degree programs but we had workforce training programs as well. So that's one of our graduating classes at the top. And, and this is at the bottom is our workforce staff. Uh, they received um, um, uh, um, uh, an accommodation that, that's uh, holding, uh, holding the award for a community award for our workforce training program. We had an office of community outreach. Uh, the top left was our transportation program. Again, we trained uh, people in the community. We provided um, uh, the vehicles for them uh, to provide transportation um, uh, for people. We helped put them in business. Um, our students did conducted uh, volunteer work in the community. Uh, the bottom left is uh, Jamal Mukti Bay conducting a community meeting. And we partnered with the city to uh, train city employees in a weatherization program. That's the bottom right uh, photo. So our students, uh, we, we, we were, our students and the college were very active in the community, was, was part of the education program. is our School of Nursing. Our, our students um, uh, uh, conducted um, uh, um, samples and training programs in the, in the community. 
that's a student uh, in one of our phlebotomy classes, uh, drawing blood uh, for community residents. The bottom, uh, the bottom photo is a uh, um, health fair at, at Polytechnic High School with Sojourner nursing students participating in that. So we wanted to link not just theory with practice, but uh, our students with um, operations in the community and other institutions in the community and and students in high school because we were we wanted to help students understand the transition from high school to college we this was the um, um, the uh, inner Harbor East Academy for young scholars the charter school that we started um, elementary school we moved we added a grade each year. Uh, we got up, I think, to the eighth or the ninth grade, um, starting from pre-kindergarten. And so this is the, we call that the Inner Harbor East Academy for Young Scholars. And again, we wanted to help people understand that they were scholars. You start thinking like a scholar, you act like a scholar, you, you become a scholar. It, it, it's a transition. We, our workforce center, we had uh, also professional and continuing studies. These are students who are graduating. Um, this one in, in, in pharmacy um, technology. This is a pharmacy technician certificates that they had earned and nursing, uh, assisted nursing. We had a wellness center, which supported the students with study skills. And, and if they had issues that we could help them with, we referred them to external social service resources. Um, again, um, this is the director. Oh God. Dr. Uh, Richard, I mean, Bob Richard Rowe. Richard Rowe, Dr. Richard Rowe. Yeah, uh, I, I just, just to let you know, Doc, um, I, I don't know what Bob Richard had to do with it, right? But I want to show you something. What? I received an award recently, you know, as a proud Sojourner Douglas uh, uh, alumnus uh, from the, is the Max, is the Dr. Maxi T. Coley of Phoenix Horizon Award presented to me for people's choice for impact on mental health and substance use in the community. And, uh, you know, Dr. Baba Rowe is very connected with this particular um, institution. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Thank yeah. you. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I'm still connecting with him as well. So it, it ain't Great. stopped. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh -huh. uh, we had an office of the first year experience um, for students who help help develop effective study skills. On the left is a student, um, and on the right, um, in the center, lady with the glasses on is director of the um, office of first year experience. names up forgive me <laughs> um uh, uh this is uh with our assets you know our different programs uh but our students uh were our assets these are students uh, graduated we also we were the first college in the united states not a glad you know that adopted the kente cloth mm -hmm. and now i think just about every at least every black college in the United States, um, um, you know, has adopted the Kinty cloth. But we were the first first college in the United States to adopt the Kinty cloth. Okay, historical fact. I'm going to use it. <laughs> mm -hmm. This was um, uh, 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 we received. Um, um, an award of uh, uh, political campaign management um, uh, program. Oh, God. Um, I'm trying to think of her name. Um, uh, God. Um, you have to forgive me by my, my, uh, my memory is not what it used to be. 
Yeah, we definitely uh, more than forgive you. Um, <laughs> but we, we, and we also understand that this sister, um, yeah, we understand. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. But, but we were, we, we, we were, um, I think we were well respected in, in the community. Um, both by uh, community leaders and politicians, um, other college presidents um, um, who saw what we were doing and um, recognized and respected what we were doing. Queen of B says Donna Brazil is her name, Doc. Donna Brazil. That's right. That's right. Thank All right. You. Queena, Thank you coming through. You coming through, Queena. <laughs> Thank you. And the brother here, he was uh he was a leader. He was one of the uh uh leaders of one of the uh uh black political parties or something like that. I can't think of his name again, but thank you. Next slide. This was our um one of our buildings is on the on the footprint of our main building. We we, we were going to renovate this um, and create a, a clinic, a health program. Um, we had a major um, in, in, in several majors in the areas of health, and we wanted to uh, renovate that building. Um, it's an old historic building. I love the love the building, mm -hmm. and we were going to create a. a community health clinic in that building. Allied Health has been our school of Allied Health. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, nice this one. is the building we had on Park Avenue, 810 Park Avenue, that we developed a, um, um, a think tank um, in the building that was uh, formerly was turned over to us by the uh, I, think I forget the organization that gave us gave us the building um, 810 Park Avenue um, and we were going to take space in the Old Town Mall um, and renovate uh, to create um, opportunities for students uh, educational economic opportunities for residents of Old Town in the Old Town area where we were located close to the Old Town Mall. Now, to talk about that, um, I actually was a part of those talks. I That, build, that building, uh, Park Avenue, was beautiful, by the way. Yes, and um, I so I've been there quite often uh, meeting with, now I'm forgetting the, the brother's name. Um, he was an attorney. And he was also a professor at, at, at Sojourner. John Morris. Yes, 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 John yes, yes. Morris. See, I forgot his and you got it. See? <laughs> <laughs> we were we working on it together. So, right. uh, and, and uh, yes, uh, uh, Dr. Morris was, I mean, he was sharp, right? And we will be talking about developing in, 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 in community and how the community itself could help develop old town mall versus Hopkins getting it and doing all those type of things. And it was very beautiful. So I was firsthand, I mean, in community leaders around and me being a student and so many other people at the table talking and struggling together to, you know, develop and um, mm -hmm. uh, expand the footprint and also to help the community and all, all those great things, you know? So, mm -hmm. yeah, it was called the, the promissorium. Mm. That John Mars helped develop with people in the community. Yes, yes, and the community people came in and church and, and all. Yeah, it was great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Next slide. So, right, our our plan was our strategic master plan was to link all of the buildings and campuses for, for video conferencing and other high technology applications. You know that now that this whole education, this video, is has become the thing. Mm -hmm. We were in the in the in the early stages um, mm -hmm. uh, of this whole concept of 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 video conferences and education, online degree programs, 
we started initiating these online degree programs mm -hmm. and we were exploring the process of moving. We offered both bachelor's and master's. And we were in the process of including PhD programs and exploring the concept of moving towards university status. Mm -hmm. It's our strategic plan. This is, uh, uh, we wanted to create a school of hotel and hospitality management in the harbor area. So we had we had uh, dreams. We were also in, in, interested, um, as you pointed out um, earlier, Dr. Winkler, in international education. We believe that Sojourner travel well, and we wanted to create an opportunity um, for student exchange for our students to, to, uh, to uh, uh, go abroad and, and, and at an educational institution in another country, and also to bring uh, foreign students um, to Baltimore or to Maryland. And so we negotiated linkages um, uh, in several um, countries abroad. This is right here. Um, this is Mekong University. You see the sign says, Welcome Sojourner Douglas College Delegations. This was in December of 2012. And that's uh, me there and, uh, and um, Richard Freeman, um, who was interested in, in helping uh, to organize and uh, lead person and set up some of these meetings and some of these linkages. Uh -huh. so this was um, Mekong University. You'll see um, this was um, uh, uh, business, uh, business Institute in Ind Indonesia, uh, Thames Business School. This is uh, uh, me and uh, Richard Freeman there uh, with the president of, um, of, the, of Thames Business School in Jakarta, Indonesia. This is the uh, University um, uh, uh, El Ansel in Indonesia. Uh, we signed agreements and, and, and uh, linkages with them. This is the American Center for Education, ACE, in Singapore. We signed an agreement there. This is uh, uh, Dr. Johnson. Uh, he's the director of education there, international education there. This is Ho Chi Minh University in Vietnam. This is a signing agreement. This is the, on the left is a built picture of the building. On the right at the top is a um, uh, signing um, ceremony um, and gift exchange at the bottom. It's, uh, uh, this is Dong Nai University in Vietnam. Again, um, signing agreements and gift exchange. Uh, the institution is on the left and on the right. Uh, again, that's uh, Richard Freeman um, with me. Um, we're signing and, and, and exchanging gifts. Mekong University in Vietnam. Uh, again, there's a signing agreements and, and gift exchange. Uh, these are some of the students. This is Sino College in Hong Kong. Um, the same thing, we signed agreements there. Um, this is Yangtai University in China. And the sign in, in, in Chinese there says, uh, welcome Sojourner Douglas College delegation. And these are signing, signing agreements at the top. At the bottom right is the is a, a architectural rending rendering of the Yangta campus. And this is a delegation. This is us, the delegation there with um, the president of the college uh, standing outside of the, of the uh, administration building. This is Shandong Institute of uh, Technology in China. Again, these are signing agreements and gift exchange, uh, pictures of the university itself on the left 
and gift exchange and, and with the president um, on the right. Uh, this is uh, Lu Dong University, again in uh, Yangtai, China. And again, the, the, the banner at the top, at the top is the picture of the campus. On the right-hand side is an architect, architectural rendering of the campus. On the left uh, is a um, uh, ex gift exchange there that sign again says, welcome Sojourner Douglas College delegation. That's with the, me and the president of, uh, of Ludong University. This is uh, again, uh, U Ludong University and um, um, uh, uh, the closing dinner, this is a gift exchange on the bottom, on the top left is with uh, the, our delegation as well as the delegation from Ludong University at the bottom is the mayor of Ludong University and we had given gifts, that's me and the mayor exchanging gifts and at the bottom right as a closing dinner, the, the top uh, right is the uh, lady from, uh, she's head, I can't read that, head of, um, of uh, a committee that, uh, that uh, sponsored the dinner. Um, and so the, the bottom right is the uh, delegation from Sojourner Douglas, as well as the delegation from New Dong University. That's a closing, closing dinner. This is in uh, Suriname, South America. We um, uh, helped stand up a university in um, uh, Suriname Institute of Technology in Suriname, South America. This is a televised signing agreement um, on the left and on the right, it, um, both the left and the right at top with uh, me and the president of um, Suriname, South America. This is um, in Kenya. This is um, Daniel A. Rap Moy. He was the vice president of Kenya at the time. Uh, Jomo Kenyatta was the, was the uh, president. When Jomo Kenyatta died, uh, Daniel A. A. Rap Moy became the president. So this is um, uh, negotiating agreements. And the right is the Kenyatta Conference Center. That's where we were negotiating linkages agreements with, uh, uh, with uh, uh, the vice president of, of Kenya. Wow. This is um, Cairo University in Egypt. Um, and that's new. I, I led a delegation. That's me at the uh, second from the, from the left. This was what, what an organization called NAFIO. NAFIO was the National Association for Equal Opportunity in Higher Education. It was a consortium mm -hmm. of the uh, historically and predominantly black colleges in the United States. Uh, we also were negotiating linkages. The one in the middle, that's Earl uh, Richardson. He was president of Morgan. Um, the second from the right, uh, get, um, he was president of, of another black college. The one next to me is Dr. Samuel Myers. He was president of NAFIO at the time of the National Association of Equal Opportunity. The bottom is Uganda, we were negotiating with colleges. This is at the equator in Uganda. This is Henry Ponda on the left, uh, left of, of side of me, on my, next to me. And that's his wife. Henry Ponda was president of um, one of the, uh, one of the historically black colleges. Doc, um, as you present this, um, I'm thinking about something that just came out recently from um, Dr. Malefi Kitty Asante at Temple University. Um, he was speaking to um, the some people in the administration at that school actually trying to destroy the African Studies program or the Africology program or, or um, a program or African American Studies program. They go by Africology, but you know also African American mm -hmm. Studies program at mm -hmm. Temple University. Um, he said there's a, is, there's a an attempt to destroy it. Um, also, he spoke to this thought where he, he said that one of the um, administrative higher ups told him that Africa has nothing to offer Temple. He said it was just that 
blatant mm-hmm. the, 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 the the racism he called it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's right it, we'll, you'll see it I mean it's and it's rising I mean it's rising its head again hmm This was um, in Cairo University in Egypt. This is um, sitting next to me uh, is Boutros Boutros Ghali. Um, he was a former Secretary Secretary General of the United Nations. So we were there at, at um, uh, uh, Cairo, uh, the Suez Canal University, Cairo, Egypt. This is again Henry Ponder. These this was a, a college president. Um, next to Henry Ponda, that's me, second from from the right, and and the one at the right and the one next to me are two presidents, um, Egyptian um, presidents, African presidents, and the and the, and the brother here on the far left was um, with the National Association for Equal Opportunity in Higher Education, so we were negotiating linkages there. Um, uh, in Egypt as well, and this was one of the big sessions where uh, the Secretary of G- United Nations, Secretary General of the United Nations, was there uh, with us. Um, again, this was in Egypt. Um, I'm on the uh, took the opportunity to try to ride a camel. Oh. <laughs> well, while we were in Egypt, <laughs> I don't think I was brave enough when I was there. <laughs> uh, Can, let me I'll take a pause for a second, Doc, and say, uh, family, those who are tuning in, uh, I, I like I will say this, uh, Mr. Pittman. Um, I, I think uh, Mr. Pittman and my father are good friends. I think um, Mr. Pittman said, uh, Jerry Pittman says, "Hello, Doctor Simmons." Hello, Mr. Pittman. How are you? Yeah. And I also want to... You you had anything else? Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And anyone who wants to join in and uh, if you have questions after or even during Doc said that he's open to questions um, as we flow. Uh, I have provided a stream, a link to StreamYard where you can join in and you don't have to uh, come on camera if you don't, but we can at least hear your voice. I, I like that last <laughs> oh, one. It was a uh, said Doctor Simmons is looking well. Huh? Thank you. Oh, oh yeah. I, m- maybe I should have said that one, right? <laughs> you <laughs> looking good, head. Doc. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, he did like that one. You can tell, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. This slide here was um, again. We had uh, good relationships with. African um, um, uh, citizens and African institutions. Uh, this was when I was um, um, inducted in, uh, into chieftains. I was made a, a chief. This is a ceremony at the college where I was um, in, in, in tool, they call it, as a chief of the Igbo um, nation. So Chief Dr. Simmons. All right. Ashe. <laughs> Jay, I loved it. <laughs> this was, uh, we gave an honorary degree uh, to the president of uh, Burundi. Um, that's the president in the middle. That's me behind him. Uh, this is um, second from the left is Dr. Samuel Myers. Uh, again, he was president of NAFIO at the time, National Association for Equal Opportunity. On the far left is Dr. Calvin Burnett. I mean, the far right is Dr. Calvin Burnett. He was president of Coppin at the time. That's his wife mm-hmm. in front of him. In the middle is the uh, um, the Honorable. Um, um, I can't see it. Um, uh, president of Burundi. It's Cyprian. Yeah. Yeah, I can't. It's covered up by the banner now. Yeah. Cyprian, not I can't do the second name, but yeah. president, <laughs> yeah. the president of Burundi. Mm-hmm. So, so we tried to we tried to create and maintain 
uh, relationships uh, with Africa, African citizens, um, African institutions, uh, African leaders, politicians. Um, uh, we thought it was essential because our ultimate goal was to create that linkage and, and uh, mm. so that we could have exchange, student exchange, citizens exchange. Um, yeah. So what will be the importance of exchange if you could go a little deeper into that? Like um, I heard, uh, again, I was at a lecture last evening with Dr. Marimba Ani, and she spoke about the importance of connecting with the continent. Do you have any ideas what, 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 why that would be important? Well, um, I, I think we, we have to re recall that that's where we came from. Um, uh, America uh, was built on slavery, racism. They uh, uh, kidnapped us um, from the continent, enslaved us, um, tried to um, try to brainwash us into um, thinking that there was no connection between us and our people and our continent. And, and I think it's very important, um, not only then, but now and, and in the future, for us to find a way to continue that relationship, um, to maintain a relationship with our ancestors, with our people. We, you know, that's still, uh, you know, our blood is, is, is still there. And, and, and just like it's important for us to maintain a relationship uh, with our fathers and mothers and grandparents and great grandparents, I believe it's, as e it's equally important uh, for us to maintain relationships, both emotional and economic huh. relationships with the continent, with the people in the continent of Africa. Africa is one of the richest continents in the world, still uh -huh. is, um, and it's being exploited. Uh -huh. And um, and we can, I think we can, we can help develop it. I mean, you know, there's a, a lot of skillful, educated, skillful. Um, uh, African American people, who many are, several are going are already going back to Africa and making a contribution, but but there's a lot that can be done there, and I think it's important to maintain that relationship. Yeah. So similarly, um, Dr. Marimba Ani said last evening that she feels that in order for us to really um, exact our power is we, we have to really have that connection as you said this uh, to, to 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 cooperate economically even um and she said without that connection um she almost really said it's, it's really impossible for us to really uh rise as high as we can i agree 100 percent. 100 percent. thank you for that so this is uh uh on the top left is me with um, President Bill Clinton. Uh, the top right is me with President Al Gore. And the bottom left is uh, me with uh, then uh, Maryland uh, Governor Glenn, Paris Glenn Denning. So um, we, we had a, a shared vision. Um, uh, we wanted to uh, help anchor the, in, in the community to assist community residents become self-determined through education, jobs, applied research, training, community organization and collaborations, both with, with our local community and again, as we just uh, spoke of, with the African community. So um, uh, we think that that's very important uh, we, we do that we create these relationships 
so that as a people, uh, as individuals and as a people, we can thrive and, and sustain ourselves, both economically, um, socially, psychologically, ethnically. Uh, yeah, next, next slide. So we we um, we did again uh, maintain um, uh, relationships with the other black colleges. This is these these are uh, other black college presidents. That was next to me uh, sitting is uh, Dr. Calvin Burnett. He was president of Coppin. Dr. Andrew Billingsley was president of Morgan. Um, Dr. Um, Oh God, President of the University of Maryland, Eastern Shore. Oh God, um, boy. And at, uh, standing behind us, um, Heitch, Dr. William Heitch, President of the University of Maryland, Eastern Shore, standing behind us are the vice presidents of these institutions. Uh, the, the lady there is uh, uh, Dr. Burnett's wife and, and Dr. Um, um, President Morgan's wife. And the other lady is uh, uh, Jean Heitch Williams. She was uh, uh, one of administrators at Sojourner Douglas College uh, to her, between her and, and uh, Dr. Governor. Her next wife is Dr. Andrew Jones. He was vice president of Sojourner Douglas College. And on the far left, um, young man was, um, he was the uh, vice president of, um, I think, the University of Maryland Eastern Shore. Uh, God, I'm, I'm name has escaped me, who's become um, a national, international educator. Um, God. Um, uh, there, um, I was awarded an honorary doctor degree uh, at Goucher College. That's uh, Goucher College president in the blue. And standing next to him is... Um, uh, <laughs> um, you know, in my slide presentation, there was a there was a bottom piece where I had notes. Uh, <laughs> uh, what's her name, uh, Doctor Winkler, S uh, Congresswoman? I'm I'm struggling with her as well. <laughs> she yeah. she was she received an honorary degree from Gouch at the same time as well, oh. and the, and the lady on the phone. Not that net. I don't know those people really that well, but it's not Nancy Pelosi or anything like that. Nancy Pelosi. Oh, yes. okay, got it. Okay. Yes, yes, uh, Congresswoman or Senate, Senator Nancy Pelosi, and the lady on the on the far left, she was an alumnus of um, Goucher College, so the three of us received honorary degrees, honorary doctoral degrees from from Goucher College. This was um, um, a congressional record. Uh, from Dr. Ben Cardin, um, a tribute to Charles Simmons, PhD, um, um, congressional record. Uh, it says, uh, um, Mr. Cardin is uh, a ray rise to say, Mr. Speaker, I rise today to pay special tribute to Charles Simmons, PhD, founding president of Sojourner Douglas College, Maryland's only independent um, institution of higher education focused on educating African Americans. Said, so like Sojourner Truth and Frederick Douglass. Um, so, this is a, 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 a name, the street um, after uh, Charles Simmons Way that was over on uh, right over by the school, uh, Caroline Street, uh, the, the, the five and six hundred block of Caroline Street. So let me make that be clear. I can see you got a little humility in you. So they they named the street after you. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, this is a, a visit from um, Governor Glenn Denning. This is um, uh, Senator McFadden. Second one from the left is Senator McFadden. That's Governor Glenn Denning. Uh, that's Ray Haysburg, the second from the right. Pat Scott was a member of our board. That's Ruby Glover sitting down. Dr. Marion Stanton sitting. Ken Banks is the far left. Um, and that's a student. The lady is a student at Sojourner Douglas College. So 
Uh, this is a visit from um, Ed Hitchcock is on the left and Mayor Martin O'Malley is on the right. Picture, hope that's a picture right there. Though, go back one more. Time. One, what's the ja. what, What's up with that hand, Doc? What, what's happening? What were you? What were was, you saying? I don't remember. I was pointing <laughs> something out to him. Uh, yeah, that looks. That looks. That that right there. That's the picture. <laughs> Look, I need that one. That's that historical shot that's going. It's going to ring forever, right there. It, <laughs> look, it looked like you. Like, yeah, it's serious. But <laughs> I'm just thanks, Ja. ja thank you, brother Ja. <laughs> <laughs> and that this is um, uh, Lieutenant Governor Michael Steele uh, at the college um, holding up a Sojourner Douglas uh, T-shirt. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a proclamation we received from uh, Mayor Kurt Schmoke. Mm. This is a proclamation from Congressman Elijah Cummins. Mm. This is um, this is uh, on the right is uh, uh, Mayor Clarence Duburns. He was the first uh, black mayor mm -hmm. of Baltimore, along with in the center of Sampson Green. He was a uh, um, again he was one of the local civil rights leaders with Walter P. Carter that helped mm -hmm. get Sojourner up and started as Homestead Montebello Center of Antioch, and mm -hmm. he became a lifelong member of the board. And when he passed, his wife. Um, uh, join the board. Uh. This is um, uh, Senator Nathaniel McFadden. Uh, he was there. He was in East Baltimore uh, with um, uh, on the far right is Marie Washington. Um, she was very prominent and active in the community, economic development opportunities in the community. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. This is um, uh, some of our administrators at one of our commencements with the, in the center next to me is uh, Mayor Sheila Dixon. She mm. received an honorary degree and she spoke. She was a speaker at one of our um, commencements. On the far right is uh, Ruby Glover. She was a, uh, she was a, uh, she's history, Sojourner Douglas history. She was a singer, uh, very active in the community. Mm -hmm. Uh, these are the um, uh, campus directors. This, on the far left is Doris Carroll. She was center director of Orange Mills campus. Uh, this uh, Dr. Vivian Fuller. She was camp Cambridge campus. Dr. Um, uh, Bernard Gross. He was director of the Prince George's campus. Uh, Dr. Connie Stewart. Uh, she was director of Salisbury campus. And on the far right is Dr. Charlestine Fairley, uh, campus director of the Annapolis campus. This was, um, uh, we received an award, uh, that was uh, Donna Brazil. She was chairman of the Democratic National Committee. And on the far left is Michael Cryer. Uh, he was the chair of the Maryland Democratic Party. Um, and, and the lady in the middle was one of the local community leaders, Sojourners receiving a, an award, a proclamation uh, from the um, uh, uh, National Democratic Committee. So um, I again just want to, um, uh, Dr. Winker, Dr. Winkler, thank you um, for this opportunity. And I want to thank all of the uh, participants here. I want to thank uh, Mr. Masak, uh, the technician, for um, uh, uh, you know helping us with this, and um, and again, I just I just want to thank everybody who is on, who participated um, in this opportunity, and I want to apologize for for the memory slips, but I wanna I do want to say that this is an important opportunity. Um, I'm in the process of, of writing both my biography and a history of Sojourner Douglas College. And I would love to hear from you uh, some of the things you're doing. I want to include it. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Winkler, I, 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 I see some of the things you're doing. 
-hmm. but I, I would I wish you would um, you know send me an overview uh, because I I've seen some of the things that our alumni are doing and they're doing some magnificent things in mm -hmm. the community and it needs to be um, it needs to be put out there I need I, it needs to be um, you know, communicated to the broader community, and and this is one way of doing it. Absolutely. I mean, this is a wonderful opportunity right now, and um, uh, to connect. Um, but please, um, if there's a way that uh, Dr. Winkler, you can uh, uh, send a link. Uh, yes. My um, email um, address, mm -hmm. so that. Um, people who want to uh, communicate and, and send me uh, inf material information that I can publish about um, um, things that alumni are doing. I would Absolutely. love it. I yes, love I'll, it. I'll get I'll get on that. And um, and, and I appreciate uh, you coming on. Uh, I, again, I told you the other day, it's historical, right? And um, and uh, just going through that that journey with you was beautiful. Um, and I think that that's that that story. And I'm glad that you're documenting it. And we got uh, a chance to even document it over here. And um, the more documentation, you know, the best. And, I, and, and Brother Josh said earlier um, that is very inspirational because sometimes we never know um, how how we can how how we can go until we know what our uh, forefathers and mothers, our elders, um, even ancestors have done, you know, and once we realize what they have done, we know what we can do and how, how far we can go and we can take it further. Um, so we do have some, some, some individuals that may want to ask you some questions. I have, I have a few questions for you, Doc, before you, before we close out as well, if that's okay with you. So, uh, brother Jai, uh, if you have any, um, guests in the, or guests that want to come on and talk a bit. Um, we I know we have Brother Jabari Netter, and we have Sister Queen of B here. Um, Brother Jabari, um, yeah. So, I, yeah. So Brother Jabari has a lot of history uh, at your institution, Doc. Um, Sister Queen of B, she just she just everything black black box radio. So yeah, I'm opening the floor up. Peace, peace. Can you, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, okay, okay. Just want to thank y'all for having this ha having this event today. Thank you, Doctor uh, Winkler, Doctor Asa. Appreciate you for you know for um, helping to make this happen. And Doctor Simmons, man, I don't even know where to start with you and 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 the, and the great story that you just told and and the things that you did to help position our people to be in the great uh, uh, just just the, just the advance as a people. We really appreciate you and I. I can't thank you enough, man. So, Jerna, you know, for over ten years, y'all, 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 y'all took us in as a. a, a I, I never went to Sojourna myself. My mom went to Sojourna, my uncle went to Sojourna, uh, my ex-wife went to Sojourna. So, a lot of people that I know went, but I still consider myself a member of Sojourna because we brought the other part of education to Sojourna with Reality Speaks, and we brought everybody there to Sojourna. And y'all took us in with, with, I mean, with open arms, and 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 I can't thank you enough for what you did. <clears throat> I mean, with um, Dr. Rawlins, Brother Rawlins, and 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 many of the other people that we just work with through your institution, and and, and Brother um, Jamal Moody Bay. You know, I mean, like, like I I love y'all. I love you know, and I, I just I just can't say it enough. I mean, my my uh my mom got married in <laughs> in your ca in, in the cafeteria there you know what i'm saying my reception when i got married was in was in your um your your, your cafeteria my sister had her reception in your cafeteria <laughs> like like we got history there like you know like i said from from dr ben to dr francis crest wells and to you know um to many of the great scholars i can't thank you enough and 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 i was talking to dr saw and we were just talking. I was talking to him and telling him how much I missed Sojourner at Douglas College. It was like a, it was it was it was a home base, a home place for us. And and I appreciate your many sacrifices and the things that you had to do for that institution. And it's it's nothing like it right now. It's nothing like what you were able to produce 
in the community. So I don't have questions. I just I just got you know accolades. I just got you know just want to greet you with supreme with a supreme salute and just let you know how much that I appreciate you and my family and and just the community in general. Man, we we love Sojourner and and thank yeah, you. That's, that's really thank really you. all I just had to say. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. My turn. <laughs> Greetings, Dr. Simmons. Um, it is a pleasure to be in space with you. Um, I have a question, but I want to say um, it is it is just a blessing to to hear this journey that you've been on and definitely um, producing the capacity for a scholarship um, for, for Black people and also in a community and having that kind of be a part of the fabric of Sojourner Douglas. I want to say I'm a graduate of Morgan State University. I never heard of Sojourner Douglas until I came to Baltimore. And so um, I never was on a campus. So I'm just hearing this journey that I've heard today is just, it's inspiring, it's beautiful. And um, it seemed like it's intentionally black. Um, going to Morgan was a black, definitely a um, exposure to black people and, and being in a black centered space. But this Sojourner Douglas seems like it was just community and all of these things. And so I do have a question though. Well, not a question, more of a statement because we're in a, in a, a space of technology and uh, things have things are changing fast and education is, is so systematic now, so systematic driven. And I think um, I wanna ask you because it sounds like you guys were on a cusp of, uh, of being very forward to some of the things that you did that that people weren't even doing at that at that time and trying to create spaces, international spaces and tentacles everywhere. So I wanna kind of ask when it comes to um, the type of society we're in now and how education is, is, is definitely systemized and um, it's gonna be technological driven. What, how do we create spaces for activism? And because it looks like our leaders, when I hear what you're talking about, like Coretta Scott <coughs> and the many leaders in the community back then, they they spoke to the presidents. They 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 had relationships that were centered in, in first of all, us being black people in the struggle. And I think we are we've gotten away from the struggle because we're you know, of course we've been integrated, and um, we 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 have this not i think this this thought that we're free that everything's good because we're so integrated into to, to society and so how do we create the activism and the spaces for for um for education our scholars are put in front of us by by the media and usually they're not actually scholars they're, they're either entertainers or they come from other branches of our of other spaces in our community how do we create this educational space that like you created the gaps that we have now in education boy that's a great question <laughs> um and it's certainly let me say that it, uh, it's certainly something that's needed and yeah. you're absolutely correct uh we think we think we're integrated into the community um but Interestingly enough, that this movement now, present movement of, of um, trying to, I mean, of, I, I don't want to get too political, um, um, but there is certainly a need uh, to help us understand that there is a movement against us yeah. that we need to come together we need to educate our people we need to create economic opportunities within our community for our people we need to create um, educational opportunities within the community for our people to help us understand the whole concept of self-determination because there's a movement and it's growing mm -hmm especially in this upcoming political uh, campaign Absolutely. Um, against us. And, and I mean, I, I, I love what we're doing now and, that, and I love what uh, Dr. Winkler is doing and I, and I, and I, 
And, and that's one of the reasons that I was so excited when Dr. Winkler contacted me about this opportunity for us to start this dialogue. Mm -hmm. And even if this is the beginning of a dialogue, I know uh, uh, there are other movements around the country and mm -hmm. Dr. Winkler has um, mentioned some of them, but we need to find a way to collaborate with these movements to, to, to bring them together. What they're doing in, in New York or Chicago, we need to link with them. Um, what they're doing in um, Atlanta. I mean, you know, um, we had a movement going. Um, Dr. King was assassinated. Major Evers was assassinated. I mean, you can go on and on and on. Um, um, so it's serious. Mm -hmm. uh, the effort to control us and sure. and continue to enslave us is a serious movement among some people, and we have to take it serious, and mm -hmm. we have to find a way to come together um, with other groups and organizations around the country, um, or else. Wow. Uh, we're going to be in real trouble. Uh, we're going to be in real trouble, and I, so I love your question, and and um, and you you have a you have a voice, and you have a vehicle. Uh, we need to you know black box radio. We need to link with you. We need to we need to con continue this dialogue. We need to find a way to recruit you know, people to what you're doing. Um, we need to um, find a way to recruit people to what Dr. Winkle is doing. You know, we need to just link all of these efforts around the country or we're gonna be in, in dire trouble. So I, I, I really thank you for that question. Uh -huh. You're welcome. Can I say something else if you don't mind? Absolutely. Yeah, I use technology because, of course, I told you I've never visited a campus. So I, I pulled up on Wikipedia what it says about Sojourner. Can I can I read that to you? Sure. And it says uh, Sojourner Douglas College was a private college organized around an Afrocentric focus of study and located in Baltimore, Maryland. The college was founded in 1972, 1972 and focused on educating mature students. The college's accreditation was revoked by the Middle States Association, Association of Colleges and Schools, effective June 30th, 2015, and the college remains closed for instruction. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to say that because it kind of segues into a, what I would like to, to ask. And um, because we have Black colleges that are um, particularly not private, they're public, um, like Morgan, which I, and um, a lot like a Howard and, these, a lot of these colleges are not, first of all, they're named um, after white folks. Um, they've been conjured from a white gaze, um, the Spellmans, and I'm not saying they're not great. Mm -hmm. um, they've had white presidents um, at the onset, not saying, still not diminishing their, um, th their presence in our community. Do you think there's an intentional effort to keep a private institution, institution like uh, Sojourner Douglas out of the realm of education and keep it public where it has a systematic um, control of curriculum and education. You know, I'm glad you asked that. I, and part of what I'm doing in, in my um, history of Sojourner Douglas College is looking at what's happening recently. I, I don't, I must be eight or 10 black colleges that have closed mm -hmm. around the country in the last several years. Let me tell you what happened. Arne Duncan was the Secretary of Education. We had created, because we were serving adults, we had created a three semester academic year so that a student who studied three semesters could graduate with a four year degree in three years. Mm -hmm. Without normally when the, when the um, uh, a, 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 a public institution, a, a governmental agency changes a regulation, 
there's a, a, a process where they post the proposed change on, um, what is it called? Um, out, it's to make it a public record that we're about to make this change and it give people who might be affected the opportunity to respond or to adjust uh -huh. without notice. And this, this normally takes about a year before a government agency makes a, makes a change in a regulation. And they post it in the, in the, in the public record. Without notice, they, they and, and many of our students were on the, were receiving the Pell Grant and they were receiving it for three years. Without notice, they, they change the eligibility of the Pell Grant from three semesters to two. Uh -huh. and they put a cap on it, and, and, um, and many of our students had previously gone to community colleges because we were, average age of our student was 38. Mm -hmm. And they had previously gone to community colleges they put a cap on the Pell Grant, all both without notice. Mm -hmm. And just like that, we lost over a third of, just as we were going through reaffirmation of accreditation, we lost over a third of our budget mm -hmm. and couldn't recoup in time. And so the Middle States Association, which was the accrediting agency, threatened to remove our accreditation. We went to court. There were, mm -hmm. we saw, we went on record, there were at least six other white six white institutions who had deficits um, in um, uh, equal to or in excess of our deficit that there was no action taken against them uh -huh. so we put the court to make this argument but we didn't win um, so we we just lost our accreditation just like that um, and these other colleges uh, all white Mm -hmm. um, never were never affected, but mm -hmm. black colleges around the country. Um, I don't have the list in front of me, but in what what part of what I'm writing about in my uh, history of Sojourner is the the black colleges that have been that are that are, have closed in the last maybe ten years. It's it's phenomenal. I think uh, at, at least eight of them. Um, to, that I can recall off the top of my head. Yes. Uh, so, um. Doc, um, with that question um, and that answer, um, Queen, that was a beautiful um, question. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm curious to, I'm curious to know what are some of your thoughts having gone through. I, I'm just listening at the care care that you're giving to your question and even your presentation due to your journey and and when i see when i see your journey i'm seeing a person have been in a lot of spaces right a lot of spaces that a lot of us have never been in and being in all those spaces and and going through this journey what are your thoughts about do you have any different thoughts about how we should move forward should, do you think that we have a chance in the system or do you think it needs to look some other way or a combination of things? I think it's, it needs to be a combination, but I think especially there needs to be a strong effort among ourselves, uh, economic development, uh, social development. I mean, our children are our future. And, and, and if you look at what's happening now, I mean, one of the things when I talked about the cradle to prison pipeline, it's something like 75, 80% of prisoners around the country are African-American. Um, when, 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 when we started, I, I think one of the, I have this data in one of my documents, it cost something like $40,000 to build, $85,000 to build a, a prison cell, $40,000 a year to uh, retain a person Mm. Um, um, it was at that time uh, less than um, fifteen thousand dollars a year tuition, college tuition. Mm. Um, eight something like sixty-five percent 
of the people who get out of prison had no place to live. And it was a, just a, a, a pipeline, a reverse, you know, back to prison. What you gonna do? You, you, don't, you don't have a job, you don't have education, you don't have a place to live. Um, so what's your option? But to go, you know, continue a life of crime and a revolving door uh, from the community back to prison. We, it's important that we come together as a people to understand this problem and to do things to address it. We have, we have the intelligence and we have the resources to do it. Mm. And there's rich, rich black people um, uh, who, who would contribute. I'd had some who started con just before we closed, um, but we unfortunately, uh, before you know, we could uh, take advantage of the opportunity of the people who wanted to make donations to the college. You know, we were in court fighting accreditation. And we just ended up closing, but but there there, you know, black people with with money out there who could help. You know, if we came together, you know, um, uh, what you're doing with the Black Box Radio, what you're doing um, uh, uh, with the community diversity. I mean, if we could, if we could find a way uh, to come together and work together and bring the resources. I mean, I'd love to see um, Sojourner, um, um, you know, open again. I, you know, I'm too old. To, to to do to manage it I'm, I'm, I'm 86 years old but I'd love to, to help some younger person you know who would be interested in in taking it over and, and running it I'd love to you know help you know mentor um, you know help that person but 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 essentially we just need to join ranks you know with there are a lot of us doing doing work in the community. Um, but if we could find a way to come together and join ranks, I think we could make a difference, a real difference. I mean, we're making a difference already, but but there's a movement against us. Right? That was going to be my question, Dot. My question was going to be, do you think that uh, we should open back up an institution like that. And, uh, and, and look, you, you, you got a soldier here. I told you, look, look, look at least one, I, you got one soldier here, you know, that be willing to actually, uh, take part in assisting any tasks like that, starting from wherever it needs to start. You know, I, I'm, I, I'll sign up for that. I, I look, people be signing me up for a lot, want me to sign up for a lot of things, but I'd be like, no, but I will sign up for that one. Definitely. Cause honestly, I went to grad school. So that I could teach psychology of the black family. So I could teach psychology of the racism. And, you know, I never got that chance. But I've always tell people I went to a higher education so that I could go back to teach at Sojourner Douglas College. Mm -hmm. I think Jabari has something. Yeah, I want to say, Dr. Simmons, would you be willing to do like workshops for people who are interested in opening up schools slash um, you know, um, you know, things that like Sojourner Douglas College. I mean, because it takes more than just show. I know we say we got to bring people together and coming up, but it takes a certain mentality to be able to put this thing together. Like what you were able to do, what you were able to tap into mm -hmm. and, 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 and to lead our people with that institution. Like we need that type of uh, leadership training in order to be able to open up some of these, some, some of these institutions, the way that you did that. And we need to tap into what you were specifically, you know, um, able to tap into like what what books were you reading? You know what I mean? How you know, your, your meditation, your you know what I mean? Like your 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 you know, your, your your regular um, things that you would do to keep such an institution, and, and knowing that people were coming for you and trying to stop this, and then how can we you know organize to stop? them you know what i mean when they come with the shenanigans you know what i mean how can we organize to be able to be prepared to stop when they come to try to close our institutions mm -hmm. you know and, and and i know i speak with such excitement because i i just i just, I just enjoy being at so during the Douglas so much you know and, and and doing those events and and, mm. and and just me just thinking about it you know i'm just i'm just excited but i would definitely be interested in doing workshops and doing some things where we can actually train and because we need that we still need to open up a lot of a lot of schools a lot of schools we only have very few private institutions different things but we need to know 
what to do, how to do, how to approach it, what's the right um, attitude that we need to have to approach it, and how do we unify, how do we organize such a staff to be able to, you know, um, to handle that. I'd, I'd love to participate in that. And there are a number of uh, former Sojourner administrators who also would be willing and interested in participating in that. Now, I'm not as I'm not as mobile as I used to be. I have a, exactly. I, 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 I have a, you see this, a rollator. So, <laughs> I, I, so I'm walking on a rollator. Um, <laughs> That's what they call uh, Never knew the name of it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the rollator, huh? <laughs> yeah. It's so, still moving. We will yeah, make so it work I'm, with so this. I, I, and in, in fact, it's getting worse because I've been sitting at this computer writing writing my uh, biography and then writing the history of Sojourner, I need to get up. Th that would be an opportunity for me to get up and move around. I need to do that. Um, uh, I'm, I'm being treated for author uh, spinal stenosis, which is causing my um, uh, numbness in my legs and feet, you know. Uh -huh. um, uh, and, and so I'm being treated for it. Um, but I would love the opportunity to work with um, people who wanted to help either get Sojourner back up and running or another institution. Um, yeah. Dr. Winkler, tell us about the community. I mean, we were we were interested at, at early on of of that whole concept of community. And so that's something, you know, that we could we could help develop, you know, um, uh, you know. Yeah, honestly, I think that um, Sojourner was a community university already. Right. I mean, times thousand, a thousand. Um, and I say that to say all the classes and, and, I, and I'm thinking and one of my questions is going to be two things and because and, and, we, we're coming close to the end here but I do know that you mentioned this word social development I know we often talk about economic development people have different ideas and they, they know it has something to do with money right <laughs> or, or finances or or power or control of resources and all these type of things right but when we talk I, I keep hearing you say this social development I'm not sure if people are as um familiar with that term but also um i'm also thinking about this idea that that, that i think would, that i thought about as queen was asking her questions this idea of academic freedom and i, I and i think community universities allow us to have that sense of academic freedom in fact i think that you know me and dr mayat oh yeah mayat was supposed to do a show i think we will do it soon on academic freedom and um, and what it is, you know, now having gone through Sojourner Douglas College, I mean, my assumption is that there was lots of academic freedom there um, as it pertained to uh, 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 speaking uh, out, you know, speaking to us. Um, so um, I guess how can I could you tell us a little bit about social development and academic freedom? But as far as the community university, um, I would like to say. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's nothing I created, but just looking back historically at what our uh, our uh, elders and ancestors have spoken about, uh, bringing uh, the scholars to the community as Brother Jabari has done over the years, and really doing that in a way, but also bringing people who who are uh, been through in, been through academia and those who have not been traditionally through academia together to really um, educate our community. Um, so if you could, Doc, could you talk a little bit about, about more about that social development piece that you're touching on and also the academic freedom? And uh, I'm, I'm going to sign up with Brother Jabari and Queen to uh, open up Sojourner Douglas College specifically. <laughs> All right. Um, social development, I, I'm, you know, I think we need to correct, connect with our culture, with our heritage. I mean, you, you talked earlier about or 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 uh, someone talked earlier about the linkage between uh, uh, African Americans and Africans on the continent, mm -hmm. um, and I think that's part of it. Um, um, 
understanding who we are, where we came from, uh, what we need to do to continue that relationship uh, with each other. You know, even in even in the United States, mm-hmm. um, because we think we're so integrated into the broader culture, um, we're losing touch with each other. And mm. so uh, cultural and social in, uh, entanglements or in, uh, uh, arrangements, mm. need to, we, need to, we need to bring back together uh, who we are. Um, uh, that's what's important. It's got to be, we have to begin to see that as important to us. Um, pause, pause, pause. I just want to say that's my president. That's the president of my uh, blacks uh, uh, unit college. <laughs> look, look, how many? How many? Look, 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 I'm sorry, Doc, but how many black university presidents you were here talk like that? But go ahead. I, it, it was just bubbling up in me. You see, you, so, so. <laughs> no, I think it's. I think it's. I think it's very important um, that we don't lose touch of ourselves and who we are. There's a movement right now. There's a movement um, um, uh, in this country that would wipe us out. I mean, if we're not, if we're not, if we're not careful, Mm -hmm. uh, not just culturally, uh, but literally. Mm -hmm. um, and, And they're saying it. And you can you can see it, you know, on this on the social media, um, people are threatening to do this and uh, actually doing a lot of it. Um, so we need to we need to understand this is a very serious period of our history. Um, you know, we've we've there's been ebbs and flows, you know, from slavery to lynching to assassinations, uh-huh. to oppression. Uh-huh. You know, I mean, there's been an effort the whole time we've been here to oppress us. And we need to understand that. Um, and we need to find a way to come together to build each other, to build our, to build our communities, to build institutions, uh, to build organizations to build Uh, businesses together and support businesses support each other i say or we're going to be in trouble Uh, well doc with that i'm going to say it was truly a blessing the people were blessed brother jabari just had to jump off he said he it was really beautiful he loved it um, I'm certain um, we have plenty of we have at least a few, you know, you only, you know, a few people do most of the work anyhow. Um, but uh, definitely. Um, I, I mean, I, but I also listened to what you shared today with the students and how you guys included the students and I, me actually being a part of it. You know, that whole uh, process and and uh, um, theory and application. And I, I'm just going to say thank you again for your time. And um, do you have any closing words to take us out? No, I'd just like to say that I would love for us to find a way to continue this level of communication. Not Maybe not like this, but, but a way that we can do it. If um, uh, Dr. Winkler, you, if you would, you know, be a conduit, the uh, people could send information to you uh-huh. You know, you could find a way to communicate. Um, I think, I think, I think it's essential that we keep this kind of dialogue going. Yes, sir. Um, um, again, I mean, if people are interested in, you know, seeing an institution get back up and running, I would love to be part of that to help with that. You know, again, you know. Um, Anything I can do with the time that I have left on this earth, you know, for for my people, I'm I'm here, I'm willing. I say, John Logic said, Doc, on the way out, he said he'll be the first student to sign up. 
So thank you again, Doc. Thank you, Sister Queen, for coming in. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, Please like this. Share this. Share it wide and broad, family. Share it deep. (laughs) <laughs> you know just share it you know like like share subscribe do all those type of things and i appreciate you dr simmons a history maker a living legend uh and until next time family peace before, before, oh, one second before you go queen would you just tell us a, a, a briefly about black box radio um because that's another way that we can we can link <laughs> and stay together she likes you ready for that one <laughs> thank you dr simmons i appreciate you giving me this space but yes black box radio is a multimedia platform illustrating black excellence our goal is to platform black people is to have a authentic space for the black face and um it's 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 very important that we have a place that we can communicate a lot of time in media media is centered around of course the majority population and and our voice is being controlled so we need to have a place where we can particularly talk um we can debate and we also can platform our greatness and also talk about things that we're not doing great so that is our goal is to, is to fill that gap in community and um, we do it six to eight nine times a month we have a website blackboxradio.com which you see on the screen but we also have a youtube channel that we're building we have a show with dr da to uh, every second I'm Dr. Da. She think everybody know that, but yeah, I'm Dr. Da. <laughs> we have a show every second and fourth Wednesday um, talking real-time issues from a therapeutic um, standpoint. And we're doing, uh, we're platforming Black people all the time. We would love to have you, Dr. Simmons, um, to speak with us and speak with the community. But uh, that's our goal is to is to be a media presence for, for Black people. Mm. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, I'll be sure to tell them. I'm writing blackboxradio.com. I'll yes, definitely. please check it out. Yeah, check it yeah. out. And we're gonna have you on. Me and you're gonna have a great conversation. I already, I already know that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, so you any, anything else before we wrap it up, Doc? No, I think um, I appreciate you. I I I love this opportunity. Um, and Dr. Winkler, just I, I just don't know what to say. I appreciate this opportunity. I appreciate what you're doing and keep up the good work. All right. Thank you. Blessings. Blessings. Uh, thanks, Doc. Thanks, Queen. Thanks, listening audience. We are going to chime out until next time. Peace and power. Family. Peace, peace, peace. Thank you.